All right, let's do another Bernoulli equation example here. We have a we have a tube filled with water and it's flowing this way. So the flow flow is this way. And um we have two tubes here at the two different diameters of the pipe. Here we have the tube coming this way and then it comes this way, right? And it goes up a certain height. We have a tube here that's that's just flat down, and it goes up a height of one. So here I, I put dimensions: height one of this water level, and height two of this water level. So let's start off by labeling some points. Here we can label point one. Here we can label point two. Uh, maybe we can label this point three. And up here we can label this point 4. Okay? And the difference in height of point 3 and point 4 is point 2 meters. Okay? And the date and the and um, our height from from we can say our datum to point 3 is h1 and then to point 4 is h2. And they want us to find the flow rate in terms of the diameter d. So this is the diameter d of the smaller tube, right? Because it changes from a 0.1 meter diameter to a, just a diameter d, and it's obviously smaller. So maybe we can do a streamline from 0.1 to 0.2. But in order to do that, we need to find the pressures at 0.2 and 0.1. So let's do that using just simple pressure analysis. So maybe we can take uh, from point 0.4 to point 0.1, right from here to here. Let's find the pressure at 1. We can do that using our, you know, delta P is equal to negative gamma delta H. We've been doing that for a while now. And we can say the final minus the initial. So if we start at 4, we can say pressure 1 minus pressure 4 is equal to negative gamma of water, right, because all of this is water, times uh, negative H2 minus zero, right? So here, in this case, I set my datum here, just temporarily. So the change in height would be negative H2, right? Negative H2. And pressure at four, you know, it's zero because it's open to the atmosphere. So we find at pressure of one, is equal to just gamma of water times H2. Okay, so that's the pressure at 1. How about the pressure at 2? So we can go from 3 to 2, right? Let's set our datum, you know, again, maybe here, just temporarily. So this is done. So our pressure at 2 minus our pressure at 3 is equal to negative gamma of water our final height would be, you know, negative h1 minus 0 because we started there. <coughs> and we know pressure at 3 is 0, right, because it, it's open to the atmosphere. So we can say pressure at 2 is equal to gamma water times h1. Okay. Now, here we have h2 and we have h1. Well, can we say that H2 is equal to H1 plus 0 0.2 meters? Can we say this? Oh yeah, we can because H2 is going to be equal to H1 plus this distance here. right? And that distance there is 0.2 meters. So H2 is equal to H1 plus 0.2 meters. And we can maybe substitute this into H2, so we can get rid of at least one of the H's. So we get pressure 1 is equal to gamma of water times H1 plus 0 point, oops, not O2, we're not in chemistry, 0 0.2. All right, so we have, we have this equation here, we have this pressure, and then we have this pressure. Okay. So now, let's, let's take that streamline from 1 to 2 and say our energy had 
at 1 is equal to our energy head at 2. Okay? So V1 squared over 2G plus pressure at 1 over gamma plus, uh, we'll call the height Zs because we already have Hs, so Z1 is equal to velocity of 2 over 2G plus pressure at 2 over gamma plus Z2, right? Just a height. And let's, let's put our datum here originally. Right? And if that's true, that means the height of 2 is equal to the height of 1. So this and this cancel out, right? Now, if you remember our pitot tube example, where we had a pipe coming up and then it, it turned against the flow of water, we call this a stagnation point because the velocity here was zero. Well, that's, it's the same case here. The pipe comes down. Not only does it come down, but it bends towards the left. So it's, it's pushing against the water because the water is going this way. And the water comes here and then it stops, right? Because everything inside this tube is in static equilibrium. It's, it's not moving up or down. So we can say the velocity at 1 is equal to 0, right? Is there anything else we can cancel out? No, not for now. So what we're left with is pressure at 1 over gamma, right? That's gone, that's gone, is equal to V2 squared over 2G plus pressure at 2 over gamma. Okay, so let's, let's plug in P1 and P2. P1 is, it, and this should all be gamma of water. P1 is gamma of water, H1 plus 0 0.2 over gamma of water is equal to V2 squared over 2G plus pressure at 2, which is gamma of water times H1 over gamma of water. And here, the gamma of water, gamma of water cancel out. The gamma of water here and here cancel out. So we're left with H1 plus 0 0.2 is equal to V2 squared over 2 times gravity. In this case, it's 9.81. Move that up, All right? 9.81, because we're in metric units. Plus, here we're just left with h1. Okay, and what do you know? The h1 and the h1 here cancel out. So, we're left with 0 0.2 is equal to v2 squared over 2 times 9.81. And if we solve for v2, we get about 1.98 meters per second. Now, the question asked, um, what's the flow rate in this tube? And you know the flow rate in the smaller tube is equal to the flow rate in the bigger tube, right? Because of continuity. And we know, we know that, well, let me do that in black, we know Q, or the flow rate is equal to the area, the cross-sectional area of the tube, times the velocity. In this case, we found V2, so we'll use V2 and A2. So Q, so A, or Q, Q is equal to A times V2, and V2 we found to be 1.98 meters per second. And the area of 2 is, well, it's a circular tube, right? And the diameter is d. So the cross-sectional area is pi over 4 times d squared times 1.98. Right? That's, this is the flow rate. This is the flow rate q. And if we solve all that out, pi over 4 times 1.98, we get the flow rate is equal to about 1.56 d squared meters cubed per second, and that's our answer. The flow rate in the tube.